Fed Chair Jerome Powell has announced in December that they will not be increasing interest rates for a third time in a row. So for the third time back to back, they've announced that there will not be a rate hike. So what does that mean for us as business owners, especially going into 2024? Now, one thing that they also did talk about is that they're expecting up to three rate cuts in 2024. So if we have this full picture, we're like, okay, we know that Jerome Powell believes that inflation is being held under control. They're reaching their target of 2%. The job market is cooling, right? So everything is kind of positioned in a way where they should be cutting interest rates. However, we still don't know for sure if they're going to. They're saying they expect to, but we don't know that they are for a fact going to do that. However, if we can do a little bit of anticipation here and expect that maybe this will happen, that can open the door for some opportunities for us as investors, as business owners, as people who want to be actively engaged in the marketplace. Now, as you'll notice, when interest rates started going up, people started pulling back on certain business activities. Why would they want to do that? The reason that they would do that is because it's expensive to get money and to inject that capital into their business. So if they're going to the bank or if they're getting a loan on something or anything like that at all, they're having really, really high payments and they're having high interest loans that they're taking out from the bank. And although that is sustainable, maybe for a short amount of time, it's not sustainable long term. So they don't want to be doing this for a very, very long time because it cuts into margins. And there are a lot of businesses out there that have very small margins. So when situations like this happen, you'll see that those businesses start leaning out. They start firing people. They start laying them off. They start cutting down expenses. The idea there is decreasing their expenses every month so that they can carry a more expensive loan, right? Maybe they're paying instead of a 5% interest rate or a 2% interest rate, they're paying like eight or 10 or 12. And for some businesses that makes a huge difference because that eats into their margin and their profitability. So. Um, it can become a big issue. And one thing that you'll notice is that when we are in a time of recession, these companies, they'll pull back from some of the same business activities that make them a lot of money. Um, and then you have people even in the real estate market, for example, uh, people who are flipping houses, stuff like that. When interest rates are high, these flippers, they start kind of pivoting to other parts of the business. And why would they do that? Well, for example, if you're a flipper and you buy a house, you rehab it, and then you want to sell it on the market, it's not likely that you're going to be able to sell it as quickly as when interest rates are low. Why? Well, because people can no longer afford the same homes. If you tried to go buy the same home this year as you could maybe two years ago, first of all, your payment's going to be way bigger. So that's going to bring down the type of house that you can buy. So you can no longer afford the mansion. Maybe you can just afford like a small shack somewhere. And so a lot of people aren't willing to do that. Now, if they do have the benefit of making enough money to still afford the nice house, they may buy it now because the price could be lower than what it was a couple of years ago. However, when interest rates change again and when they go back down, they're probably going to be in the market for a refinance. They're going to be refinancing their home. They're going to be trying to get back to a lower interest rate if they have a low one right now. And they're going to be doing everything they can to lower that payment so that they're paying more towards their principal as opposed to paying interest. So some business priorities for certain people will definitely change and they have been changing for the past year or so because these people are seeing the effects of increased interest rates. So everybody's kind of in this point of anticipation of the market switching and interest rates going back down because when interest rates go down, people begin spending money again. It's no longer expensive to spend money. So if business owners are able to get cheap access to money, they get cheap money, they're going to get a lot of it because the payment stays low, interest rates are not crazy, and they're able to use that money to grow their company. They grow their business using this injection of capital that they're getting from the bank. And by the way, that can look like many different things. For some people, it's just credit cards. And by the way, these credit cards, they're easier to get when interest rates are low. We're not in a recession. The banks are very willing to lend because people are not defaulting on their loans. Another situation is that they could be getting like a line of credit or they could even some business owners, they get a HELOC and then sometimes they use that maybe to renovate their house and sell it or sometimes they use it to inject it into their company. And so they're using that capital to put into their business to help it grow faster. So in times like this, they're identifying the areas of their business that are growing quickly and that they can predictably scale, right? They're developing systems right now. They're hiring the right teams. 
they're finding the processes that work and the processes that don't work. So this is kind of like a phase of optimization in the market. Everybody's optimizing their company right now. And so once they've optimized and they've reached a point that they can take that business and take money and put it into the areas that they know are performing, right? So they've seen areas of their company that outperform. Like for example, every time they put a dollar in, they get $2 back or they get $3 back or $4, whatever it might be, right? These people are investing money into their company in specific areas. And what I mean by that is it could be marketing, it could be sales. They, they're like, hey, every time I invest a dollar into Facebook ads, I'm getting $3 back or $4 back. Okay, cool. So that's something that's probably scalable. Let's see how far we can scale that. Another area could be sales, right? If they're hiring the right people for sales, if they're developing the right collateral, their sales team is well trained. Every time they invest money into the sales team, they produce more money. So now this becomes kind of like a return on investment. And so they've identified those areas. And once money becomes cheap, they start getting those loans and using that capital to inject into their business. Now, another area that sometimes we don't think of if we're not in physical manufacturing or we work with physical goods, but it's literally just inventory. If we want to buy inventory and we're having to spend a lot of money on interest to buy that inventory, that eats into our margin. We're not making as much money because we're paying so much money in interest when we're buying wholesale, right? Or buying whatever it is wholesale and then we're reselling it on the storefront or reselling it to customers, whatever it might be. We're building up that supply that we have, right? What is our cost of goods sold? How do we calculate that cost? Well, interest is definitely something that should be considered. And so when we're getting loans from the bank, if they're high interest loans, then we're paying a lot just to acquire the very things that we're going to sell. So that already puts us at a bit of a disadvantage. However, if we're able to get cheap money and we know that every time we buy this product, let's say we're selling toothbrushes, every time we buy these toothbrushes, they sell like crazy. We just see them just totally knock it out of the park with these toothbrushes. They just sell out in a day. And so if only we could buy more toothbrushes, well, when you have cheap capital and you're able to get these loans, you can buy more toothbrushes instead of buying maybe a thousand or ten thousand you could buy a hundred thousand or maybe a million toothbrushes and that way that lasts a little bit longer and you're able to get that capital and that return back from this investment however it's at a larger scale because again you're getting access to cheap capital and you're able to use that capital to grow your company so it's important right now to identify the areas of growth for our company and for me i just look for areas that are predictably growing in my business which means that whenever I put money into XYZ, I know that they grow. I know that they produce more money for me. I know that they make my company more successful. So I look for those areas now when money's expensive, right? I have the time and the ability to focus on those things, identify them. And then when the market gets hot again, and when interest rates go down, money's cheap to borrow, I know exactly where I'm allocating that money because I have a plan. So interest rates going down is gonna be a good thing for many, many people. But now is a time of preparation and strategic planning for when interest rates do go back down. And when those cuts happen, we're ready for action. Alrighty guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.